Good morning. I'm Todd Macover, and I'm the director of the FAST Festival for Arts, Science, and Technology in celebration of MIT's 150th anniversary. We've put together this whole festival to show something about the very unusual culture that combines the arts and science and technology at MIT and really represents the creative and inventive nature of this whole community. One of the agendas right from day one was that the arts have been invisible at MIT and um, that it was time to really showcase who we were and what we do and how experimental we are and the fact that actually arts are engaged in, in research. At MIT, we try to connect all of the work that we do to science. I mean, that's almost the starting point in our thinking about many of the problems. If you have a music service, you're making a, a music iPhone app or game or whatever, there's something you're gonna use with us. We're kind of the, the big database about music that powers quite a lot of stuff that's out there right now. I want you to read me a poem. Oh, you wouldn't like my poems, Miss Richards. Please? <laughs> okay, <clears throat> I'll read this one. happy to be here and to be part of this event. It's really about a chain reaction between the arts and the sciences. We know that music is distributed across the brain, that the way it is unique in the brain can be leveraged towards clinical goals, but how do you access that in the kind of intervention where someone's empowered? One thing that rhythmic music does for people is give them a way of chopping time into, it's a kind of instruction, you chop time into equal intervals with equal substructures and so forth, and then you can see differences between things. Marvin has had an incredible relationship with music, and, and many of us here believe that that has informed his work in AI in interesting, useful ways. Barry, is he around today? There you are. I'm so glad to. I haven't touched your hand for God knows how long. about that piano that everyone should appreciate is that there's a person in this room who succeeded in setting it on fire by, by um, transcribing a score of Xenakis that had never actually, that had never been correctly played. I should uh, make a confession, which is that everything Miller said this morning is true, and it's, uh, I did blow up the Bösendorfer by making it play uh, <laughs> Xenakis at tempo. <laughs> The thing that Guitar Hero and Rock Band did was it, it made people um, not only kind of experience um, kind of this, this joy of performing music and, and what it's like to kind of be on stage and to sound awesome, um, but you also got to see how the music was put together.
there's a lesson in all this, which maybe there is, uh, for young people among you. Uh, when you have opportunities like that, don't let them pass. Uh, they can enrich your lives enormously and uh, the memories remain and in later years become more vivid and uh, even more significant. So it's wise to exploit the chance.